The health insurance exchanges are opening tomorrow, but questions abound as to whether or not this health care model will work. We've got two different points of view on this topic. Jonathan Gruber, a key architect of the Massachusetts health care reform efforts, now a professor of economics at MIT, and Ed Hasselmeyer, senior research fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Mr. Gruber, let me begin with you. Uh, I've tried for weeks now to get my head around uh, these insurance exchanges and, and how and whether they will actually work. It feels to me like an awful lot has to go right. Did it go right in, in Massachusetts? Did they work? Uh, they absolutely did. Um, I, I urge your viewers to go on mahealthconnector.org starting tomorrow and see how an exchange looks. And it worked very well. It was hard work getting it going, and there were some glitches at the beginning. But it really worked well. It provided a really organized shopping experience that finds great favor with consumers. It's, an, it's induced competition. We had a major new entrant into our insurance market. And prices have grown slowly on, on the connector. So I think it's worked really well and been a good shopping experience for consumers. Ed, you know, a lot of people are worried if it's, it's almost too good to be true and if it's saving businesses money, it's going to cost me money. Can you discuss whether or not that is indeed the case? Yeah, well, it's, uh, Massachusetts is a different example. Uh, that was a very popular bipartisan piece of legislation. It was a market that was very damaged to start with. There were a few states. Uh, most states aren't anywhere near as bad off as Massachusetts was in terms of the way the market works. So it's a little different. Uh, the problem with this law is it really scrambles a lot of existing arrangements. Start with the four to six million people who are going to be the Obamacare uninsured. You mentioned in the segment the people who have uh, mini-med or limited benefit plans. The law throws them off their coverage in January. How many of those people are going to sign up for the new coverage or are they going to go uninsured? I don't know. Um, the other thing that people have not looked at, they've looked a lot at the coverage subsidies for the premiums, but not the subsidies for the cost sharing. And what that does is it turns these plans really into something uh, that have very low cost sharing, but the only way to control costs then uh, becomes to limit the networks. And that's what you're starting to see. The, the plans going in there are offering limited networks mm -hmm. of doctors and hospitals. Mr. Gruber, why don't you respond to what Ed uh, just uh, laid out there and address the, the idea that, as I understand it, the the individual mandate is aimed at doing principally one thing, and that is uh, compelling healthy individuals, maybe the young, to buy insurance, a group that typically has said, I don't get sick, so I'm not buying. The individual mandate is designed to do one thing, but I would describe it differently. It's designed to allow America to move to a system where insurers cannot discriminate against the sick. Currently, uh, insurers do. They exclude sick people or charge them more. As uh, the other speaker mentioned, in Massachusetts, we passed a law to get rid of that. And what happened is it did mess up our insurance markets. You can't have your cake, which is fair insurance pricing, unless you eat your spinach, which is the individual mandate that guarantees that everyone participates. Yeah, in, terms, in terms of the other comments, look, what critics of this law are doing is they're finding small little pieces to pick on. Focus on the big picture. The objective Congressional Budget Office has said this law will cover 30 million Americans and lower the deficit. It will do so without affecting those with employer insurance at all. There will be no increase in employer insurance premiums. Employer insurance will go down slightly. It will cause, it will basically be a system where most Americans will not see a wit of change on January 1, and many Americans will see enormous benefit. All right. You know, basically, Ed, there are some very valid points in that, are there not? people who did not have insurance before because of pre-existing yeah. conditions? This is very important. I wrote an entire paper on this. This is one of the great myths here. And, and this is, Massachusetts is a good example of what not to do. We successfully solved this problem in the HIPAA bill in 1996 for group insurance. And all you had to do was to cover the other 10% of the market. You could have fixed it and given everybody a tax credit and they could have done it on e-health insurance and you wouldn't have needed the rest of this. There's a myth that there was a big pre-existing condition problem. There wasn't. There, the problem was in the individual market, easy to fix. Look at what's going on in this market, and that's one of the things I'm working on, is to see who are the insurers going in and who's staying out. The big insurers are staying out. The ones that are going in are the Blue Cross plans and the Medicaid managed care plans. That's who's going into these exchanges. That's who's offering coverage. I'm going to come out with an analysis of that once I have all the data in the next couple of weeks. But what I see already, it's quite clear. That's who's going in there, and they're offering limited networks. Uh, and that makes perfect sense because this was a bill that was really written to be a welfare program. It's more about that than it is about being health insurance. So for people who are below 200% of poverty, it's going to look like Medicaid. They're going to be the ones on it. 
Uh, the other people, you're seeing this happen mm -hmm. with Walgreens. They're going to go to private exchanges, big employers. They're going to be out of it. They're going to opt out of this whole thing. All right, gentlemen, we have to leave it there. I, I guess time will tell. We'll uh, get a uh, early window uh, beginning uh, very shortly. I E tomorrow. Jonathan Gruber with MIT, Ed Hasselmeyer with the Heritage Foundation. We appreciate it.